I think it's time. Thank you for coming to the session, writing CLI commands for Drupal 8 using Symfony components. I'll be showing you how to create custom commands for, for Drupal console. Okay, it's a D8 only project. So are, how many of you are working with D8 already? Like client, like really production projects, nice, awesome. How about Drupal console, did you know that, exists, tried before, run it? Great, that's great. Well, first, I mean, I am, my name is Jesus Manuel Olivas. You can find me in GitHub, Drupal.org, different social networks, that's J-M-O-L-I-V-A-S. I'm a co-founder and head of products of Wino. We are a company, a fully remote company. We do mostly Drupal, but we also do some Symfony, Silex, Laravel work. We've been doing, been doing some JavaScript lately, React and Meteor as well. And uh, we were also working with a lot of automation and, and DevOps stuff. But still, most of our work is still Drupal. Again, we are fully remote. We are in like 12 countries now. Mostly in Latin America, from Mexico to Argentina. There's, there's one guy on, on Australia and there's someone else in, in France. Let's, let's some talk about a little bit of the agenda of the, of the session. First, I'll spend a few minutes talking about what Drupal console is, so we fast and we get bored. Just like to tell you what it is for those that are not aware of the project. I will mention about the differences, how to install the project, because still some, some question, I mean, often about how to get the project working in your system. And yes, you have to install locally, and you can also, you can also have this global executable that we call launcher. I will talk about the differences of both. I will also mention how to create commands for Drupal console. I will talk about, about something we call chain commands. I don't know if you, any of you is aware of this feature. So if you like automation, you will like this feature of Drupal console. And finally, I will talk about what do you need to, to contribute to the project. And well, first thing first, so what is Drupal console? Drupal console is a CLI tool to help you to generate boilerplate code in the first place. And this is how the project just born as a code generator. And this is probably the part of the project that shines the most because it saves you a lot of time by generating different components of Drupal. So you can use the CLI to run one command and that can help you to generate forums, plugins, controllers, modules, I mean entities, I mean a lot of the uh, Drupal 8 components. We're always adding more features. So at this, at this moment we have more than 40, 30 something, 38 generators. There's always room for more. I mean, if you, there's a specific need you have, you need to generate something, you can just let us know, open a new, go to GitHub, open an issue, and we can probably add, keep adding more, more features to the project. And, well, again, and Drupal console start as a scaffolding tool, yeah, but it's not only that. So it's allowed you to generate boilerplate code, allowed you to debug the system, it means it can help you to list, I mean, or debug different subsystems of Drupal, like all of the routes on the routing system, all of the services on the service container. Um, you can also, like, you know, ex and you can also do tasks beside those tasks, you know, code generation, debugging the system, and you can also do daily tasks for, for administrating your, administ I mean, administering your site. So you can enable modules, install, uninstall modules. You can export, import configuration, you can use, I mean, if you use features still in D8, you can also export, I mean, import features from there. So you can do a lot of those daily tasks that you do with your Drupal site. Okay, first thing, I mean, something that should be, must be clear is Drupal console should be installed per site. When we started the project, Drupal console allowed you to install it globally, so something like Composer, Global, Require, la la la. But once Drupal started doing more releases like 8.1, 8.2, every version of Drupal ships with a, oh, it's, it's packaged with a different version of Symfony. And we, we find out we have a lot of issues with compatibility with some of those packages. And probably the big problem, it comes when Drupal switched from two to three, is something that's going to happen again. Well, it's going to happen in 8.4. So in order to avoid all those conflicts between different versions, you're having a global who has, let's see, for 2.3 or something, and then you have your side with Drupal with some different 
version of the symphony components, we decided to go the other route. And actually, this is how composers should be used. Composers should be used uh, locally or to manage your packages or your dependencies per project. And how do you get Drupal console in your project? It's as simple as running one command, you know, compose require Drupal console, and this command will take care of downloading Drupal console in your site, right? So it basically go to your site, CD the path of your site and run compose require, and you will have, you will have Drupal console I mean, locally in, in your site. If you have your site like that, I will show you what can you do to save you time for finding where the executable is. Okay. If this is a new project that you're just barely starting, what I highly recommend you is to use this project. It is this composer template. It's called, people call it like Drupal composer. And you can get a fully working site just by running one command, you know, composer, create project, and you pass the, you know, the project name. And this will take care of downloading Drupal, Drupal, Drupal console, Drash, uh, PHAT, PHP unit. So it, this composer template allows you to download a fully Drupal package. Once you have Drupal console in your project, well, since this is installed per project, it has a, uh, an executable. The executable is located within vendor bin Drupal, so if you, you can start typing vendor bin Drupal. The problem here is if you change to you know, the web directory or the docker directory, then you need to go something like dot dot, you know, vendor bin Drupal. But what if you are within modules, custom or module, one module name, then you need to figure out where you're at. In order to avoid this, we provide with a global executable. The global executable is like, like a minified version of Drupal console with, with just a with few commands that can allow you to find your site. So if once you install the launcher with this instruction here, you use curl to get the project, then you move your project to a global accessible path in the system, just make it executable. Once you have this, you have a one global command in your system that is called Drupal. You can name anything you want. Drupal is only an alias. Then you can type Drupal from your Drupal directory, and you no longer have to figure out where the, bin, the vendor bin Drupal is, right? So once you type Drupal within a Drupal site, it will find the, I mean the, the uh, vendor bin Drupal executable for you. You can also run Drupal and then do something like dash dash root equals to, and you can pass a path to a, to a Drupal site. You can also take advantage of site aliases and, you know, and register those aliases, either globally or on your project, and go something like Drupal, add alias name, and then any command that you want. Uh, one of the latest features we added, it's to, we allow to run Drupal console to, to containers, so we allow an extra option on the, uh, on the aliases definition, so you can, you can prepend there, you know, docker, exec, something, 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 so you don't have to do that manually, so you can just add that in your site alias definition and you run Drupal app site name, and this will prepend those options automatically in your, in your command execution. So it, it kind of saving you for keep typing docker, exec, container name, you know, things like that. Because, and we did that because we used a lot of docker in our, in, in our developments and we want to make our life easy and the rest of the, the people life easy. Okay. Before jumping into creating a new command, I want to tell you there's a command for that probably. We have more than 150 commands now, so before trying to get a new one, just probably there's something already there. Just, I mean, take a look at the, at the project. In order to find out, in order to find out how many commands we have, you can just probably go to a, install Drupal console and just type Drupal. And from here, you will see a list, all of the list of the commands we have currently available. You can go here and figure out which commands we have. I mean, there's, I know the list is huge, it's kind of hard to see, but you can go something like Drupal list and then just type namespace, like in this case, generate namespace, and it will filter the result only by the generators. <coughs> if you don't want to do that, you can go to the documentation, which is docs.drupalconsole.com, and from here, you can select, select any of the languages where the documentation is. And we have this available command section. This section lists all of the Drupal console commands, all the latest Drupal console commands. From here, you can just, you know, go to the specific command you want to see, and you will see the, uh, the definition of, of that command. You will see all of the available options here. You can also, will, at the very bottom, you will see examples of that command. 
You can do that the same thing from the CLI. You go Drupal, then the command name, hyphen, hyphen, help, and that will give you the same data that you can see here. All of the documentation is, uh, is you know, automatically generated by Drupal console, so we have commands to generate all the documentation, because I mean, all of the metadata of the project is stored in YAML files. Since, the, since we decide to add the, uh, extend the Symfony console component and make, it, make those commands translatable, we take all that metadata to render the section, the available command section of the different languages automatically with the, with the project as well. Okay, well, and again, we also provide some commands that can allow you to do things like real quick. I mean, let's say some, maybe you want to run something, but I mean, probably creating a command is, is, a, is a lot of work. So we provide the Drupal shell command. What this command allows you to do, you can go to your site, you go Drupal, type shell, once you, you bootstrap the command, you will be, you, are, you can do something like this. Let's say, let's define a, var a variable. Then now let's, you know, let's get a service from the, uh, from the, from the Drupal, using the Drupal static, you know, class for calling a service from the container. So let's initialize entity type manager. I'm using, you know, again, Drupal static class for getting the entity type service, ser service definition. And from here, what I will do, I will execute, I will, I will query the nodes in the system, and I want to load the node ID one. And finally, what I will do here, I just echo what I want. So if what you are planning to do is something like real quick, maybe you don't want to create a command, not that I don't, I, I don't want you to create commands, it's something real quick, could be something like this, just Drupal shell, and start typing PHP code. And this, and this I mean, this project we are using, which is called PSISH, can allow you to to interactively, interactively de debug and run PHP code. And what it happens when you run the shell command is we bootstrap Drupal for you, so any service on the container is immediately available. You can do anything you can do from a, from a module or from a controller or from any, any place because Drupal is already bootstrapped for you. And so a new feature that will, that will show up in the next version, so this is something that I, we just still don't have available is the snippet command. Let's say you might be want to run something real quick. You can write your one PHP file and then run the snippet command, you know. And this will execute, this will execute that PHP code. So what I'm doing here, I'm calling the snip command and just passing the flag file and I'm just giving the path to a PHP file. You can also pass this option that is called show code what this option will do is will output the content of the PHP file and will execute it, execute it at the very end. So you can do something like this for, I mean, you need to do, you know, delete all of the content types on a specific, you know, type, or you can do some real, do like a query, you do something real, real quick, that maybe is not generic enough to write a command. You can use this option as well, in the snippet, you, and just run in, and call a file from your, your local system. I mean, still we are, haven't released this feature. We are trying to figure out, add more feature like snippet debug, and if you can, what we are planning to do, I mean, we are open to ideas, so having a directory on your project, something like console a snippets, if you have different files there, we can automatically discover them and list it, list it for you, something like I've enabled this debug a snippet command that'll list all of the snippets that you have in your system, and we are thinking to add this discoverable mechanism in two directories. One is one within your site and one globally within the dot console directory. I mean, directory and then a snippets directory. So that's part of the idea. This is probably what you will see on a, in a future version of Drupal console. But the snippet command, command will show up probably a one, two versions from now. And from there, we're gonna keep iterating and adding more, more features to it. Well, now, now let's talk about how to create a new command. And uh, as, you, as you know, Drupal console has a lot of generators, so we have generators for your commands, so we have commands to generate commands for you. And if you are already working with Symfony or, or with the Symfony console component and you already grow or write a command, you will find out that writing a command for Drupal console is just exactly the same as Symfony. We create a class, we put it on the, on the directory, we register as a service, and that, Definition register the command on the container. So, I mean, if you have done this in Symfony, it's just exactly the same what you will find out on, on, on Drupal. 
by um, the way you register commands on, on Symfony, you have this something that is called the command lifecycle. And this consists of three methods. The initialize method that is optional. This is where, as you can see, based on the name, you can initialize anything, any values from, from that command. You can also have the interact method, which is also optional. This is the place where you put all the logic for asking questions to the user, right? If you are using Drupal console before, you run something and then start asking you, what's the module name? What is the, which is the pad that you want to generate this? I mean, do you want to do, you know, inject the service from the container? So all those options, I mean, all the, all the functionality for asking questions to the user or interacting with the user and in, in getting input from him, from him, this is, you use, you have it that, or you just grow that on the interact method, which is also optional, as I mentioned. The, the only required method I mean, of this life cycle is the execute, which is where you have all the business logic for your command execution. And you also have a method that is called, that is named configure, which is where you give your command a name, or you give like, you add options to it. I mean, if you want to have like options for like, like that I show you, like hyphen hyphen file, or you know, all those options or arguments, you define them within the configure method. But the life cycle consists of the interact, I mean, I mean Initialize, interact, and execute. Okay. While working with Drupal console, you will find out you can add commands to any extension. Like in this case, when I'm talking about extension, I'm talking about modules, themes, or profiles. You can also add commands to external packages or external libraries. It means you can add commands to, to a standard PHP project, not only modules. And what the benefit for that will be? The benefit for adding commands to PHP libraries is you can just register those. You can call those or something composer require my library name and then hyphen hyphen dev. So when you deploy your project, those commands won't be available on your production server. Remember, maybe some, those commands are for administration only and you don't want them to end up on the server. So you can add them in an external package. And the benefit of that, it's Drupal console automatically discover those commands and register on the container and those commands you grid, you grid, you grid those commands just exactly as a command that lives in a module. The only difference is that you don't have to install a module because when you install a module in Drupal, you end up exporting configuration and you know, that configuration should be changed if you uninstall the module to in order to deploy. Now, I mean, now we have config split that allow you to limit which configurations you want to handle per environment. Like when we start the project, it wasn't like that. Drupal used to manage the whole configuration as a one big feature and you have to explore all, I mean, all of the configuration or, or nothing, right? And how this works. Well, Drupal console command should extend one, any one of the two base classes that we provide as part of Drupal console core. We provide a command class, which is a basic class that allows you to make your, your command translatable. So once you extend this, this, this base class, then you can take advantage of the translatable feature of Drupal console. Okay? And it also allows you to do some, I mean, I'm gonna allow you to do some, um, uh, some, some things that Drupal console requires to it. But I mean, you don't have to worry about it. But you can also extend the container or command class. I don't, I mean, I really highly recommend you to use the other one, not the container aware. Use the other one, not this one, right? This is because by, do, by using the base one, you have to register, you have to use dependency injection to inject, inject services to your command, which is the recommended way to do that. By using this one, you have access to the whole container, which at some point could be a little dangerous because you have access to any service from the container. And then make your command harder to, to test, right? If you use the base one, you know exactly which services you are injecting. So let's jump into generate a new command and see how this looks like. So as I mentioned before, we have a command to generate commands. I'm gonna copy this one. First, in order to generate a command, I need to have a module. So let's call this web modules custom, let's see. Okay, we don't have nothing here. So let's run this. What I will do right now, I'm just going to run a Drupal console command, but I'm skipping the interactive mode just to make it faster, right? So I'm using, I'm passing every single option as, you know, as part of the command execution, right? And as you can see, the very last option say no interruption. I mean, I'm trying, what I'm telling to Drupal console to execute based on the option that I'm passing and just, just skip the, any, any, any possible interaction. So generate the module and the module is there. Mm -hmm. 
let's run a tree command. Yeah, sure, three. Okay, there's one file, because in order to register a module in Drupal 8, you only need the, the, the info jaml file. There's no longer a need for, I mean, adding the dot module. So that, that was simple. That was kind of silly if you want to think. This is just one file. Go to module example. That's all that generates for you. Okay, let's now generate a command. In order to generate a command, let's use this generate command command to generate a command. And as you can, at the very bottom, as you can see, what I'm doing, I'm generating a command. I'm telling, okay, I'm generating, I want to generate this one and one in a specific extension. As you can see here, I'm calling this extension and not module because you can add to different, I mean, either module, team, or profile, and I'm passing another option, which is extension type. This is the, the value that I'm, that I'm using for it, specify which type of extension is this. And also what I'm doing here, I'm just injecting the entity type manager service. So I'm using the hyphen hyphen services option to inject a service to my command. So what I will do here is run this. And this will take care of generating a few files for me. Create the, I mean, it also takes care of creating the proper directories based on the names that I provide on the command execution. So it takes care of creating the src command, the default command PHP class, and it's using default command because this is the name that I gave into the class, so you can name anything you want, right? It, but it also, it takes care of generating this console.services YML file. Let's see what's inside those files. So it takes care of doing something like this. What this definition means, this is registering my command as a service, and I'm using the argument section here in this command definition to inject a service on my command. So instead of making my command container aware, I'm just extending the, the more basic command class and I'm using dependency injection to inject the only the service that I really want to use in this command. You can inject as many services as you want to, but again, it's easier to do something like this because then your command, when you are inject, when using dependency injection, is is make it, make it makes it clear for you and for someone else in your team to find out which services you are really using on your command execution. And something that you might be noticed, this is not called module name that services, it's called console that services. And we did that because when we first started the project, we used, we used the, uh, the standard module that services that YML file. But what happens, Drupal tries to register all the services on the container if you don't have Drupal console in your, in your site, then, then your, site your site just breaks. So we decided to go the other route, kind of just use any, a unique name. So it means this, your commands are only available when you, you, while you are working through the ZLI. It means those are not available through, through Drupal execution. There are some people asking about make those, make those commands available through, you know, through the uh, the graphical interface, so we can probably, what we can probably do is provide a, um, a module, something like console or Drupal console, you know, connector or something like that to, to add those services in the container. I mean, we still, I mean, haven't like decide go that route, but there's some, some people, I mean, there's people asking about it. Okay, so we have that. So we generate the module, so we generate a command, and so now this command is available, it's doing nothing. Let me, let me show you how, what it happens. So this is the uh, service definition, but if we go to the command class, what we can see, this is what that was generated for you. It, again, it generates the file, create the directory structure, it use add on the proper namespace, it imports all of the, use, all of the classes that you require by, using, by the user statement, and again, this is, this is the same, exactly the same class that you can find out in Symfony. As you can see here, my command is extending the command class, my command class is here. This is located in Drupal console core project, okay? So I am only making my class, extending this other big class, and that's it. The only difference between a, I mean, Drupal console command, a, a symphony command, is this little dog block. What we just decide to go, the, the route that we decide to take is anything that is like Drupal only related to the command will be used through annotation, right? So we are using the dog block to define an annotation. We create an annotation called Drupal command, and this is where we define Drupal only features, for, or Drupal only metadata for the command. So we have something that we call extension, which is, I'm telling you, know, this command is living in an extension, and the extension name is example. It means only if this module is enabled, this command 
will be listed in your site. So if, I'm go, if I go here and type Drupal, and I give it the name as example default, if I run this one, it will tell me that command is not available because I have not installed the module. The, so this command makes, I mean, it's just, I mean, it will be available only when the module is installed. So let me run Drupal module install example. This will install the module, it will clear cache, will reveal cache, and then my command will be available on the system. So command is here, it tells I am a new generated command because the only thing that we add to the, on the command generation, it's the basic method. We have the execute and the interact. And as you can see, the interact is optional, but gets added because I use the flag interact here. If you don't want to add interaction, you don't have to use this flag, and then that method won't be added in your command class. And again, what it happens is my command is extended the other, you know, the command base class. The, the difference between, the, again, the command and the container aware command class, so instead of running this one, you use the container aware command class, then within any method of your command, you will, you will be able to run, do something like this, this, and then get, and that will get any service from the container. Again, don't do this, this is dangerous. Okay, again, the, uh, well, we already mentioned this, all of those commands, every single command should be registered as a service. I mean, you don't have to worry about that. You want to inject services, just run the command, select the services that you want to. If you don't know which services you want to run, you can run debug container, Drupal debug container. You can see all of the services in the container. This is a huge list. I highly recommend you to use Peco. This is our tool build on Go that allow you to interactively filtering the results. Let's say you want to use, you can do something like user. And from here you can read which services you have on the container. If you run the generate command in interactive mode, there will be a question. Do you want to add services? And if you answer yes, then you will be able to select services just by typing service, service name. So it might be the first time that you, render, you generate a command. You will be running that using the interactive mode to, to, to learn how the command works, you know. Sometimes at the beginning it's easier to use the interactive mode. Once you learn how the command works, it's easier to just kind of use the options, passing the options through the command line execution. So we have a command that, that on, that's, at this point is not providing any functionality. Let's add a, a little functionality to it. What I will do first, I will add a new option to my command. What I will do, I will first import the input option class on my command. I will go here. Then I will go to the, my configure method and add this new option I'll go here. Let's work on the indentation a little. What I'm adding here, I'm adding a new option to my command. It means immediately after doing this, I will have something like hyphen hyphen nid, and I will be able to pass a value through the command line execution. So if I go if I go this help, you will see on the help section of the command that I have this NID option available. Let's keep moving. Now let's add the interaction. What I want to happen when I execute my command, I want to if I don't if I am not using the hyphen hyphen node ID and giving giving it a value, I want my command to ask me for that value. I want this command to ask the user. So what I'll do here is copy this code. I will explain a little. What this code is doing, it's you know trying to get, it's trying to get using the input object, is the input get option. So it's reading the option that the user is providing, and then it just asking, you know, if there's no option, then use the IO object and use the, the helper method ask. What this what is going that it will going to happen is going to appear like enter node ID question and I, I will be able to get that value and store on the on the option. So as you can see here, I just get the node ID and use the input object set option to store that value, to have that value available on the execute. Remember the, the life cycle? How that life cycle is executed is initialized first, then interact, and then execute get executed at the very end of the of the life cycle process. 
So my interact method, it's here. So it means if I run the command without passing the option, it will ask me to choose to something. And finally, what I will do, I will go to the execute method and add some business logic. It's pretty much the same functionality as the other one. What I will do here, instead of showing this, I'm the generated command, what I will do, I'm not sure if I can do, oh yeah, I can do this. I'm doing the same thing here, you know. I'm going in this one. I'm reading the NID option. After this, what I'm I'm executing the exact the exactly same code that I use on my snippet file. What I'm doing is reading the node ID. In this case, I will give it the value of five. And I'm using the entity type manager service that, that I just injected. Remember the service definition where I use the argument section that I inject in the entity type manager service? So this gets automatically available because as you can see here on the constructor, we are receiving that service and storing this on a local property called entity type manager. So this means I can do this entity type, entity type manager, and the entity type manager service will be available on my command execution. So what I'm doing here is reading a value, then using the, yes, the node storage and loading a node using a node ID. If there's no, there's no node ID, there isn't a non-valid node ID, they will return an error, like you know something like, like error invalid node, and if it's a valid one, it will tell me something like the node label. So let's execute this one. Let's first do nothing. Remember the interactive mode? Now it's asking me for a value, because I didn't provide a node ID value. Hit enter, and this is the value. Remember the other execution, the, um, the snippet execution that is here? So I'm using the same number five, so it's, I'm getting the same value from the database. What if I say, and ID equals to five, what is going to happen, it will skip the interactive mode and go right through the, the command execution. What if I don't provide this one? No interaction. What is, what is going to happen if I say no interaction, the command execution will, ex, will skip the interact, interact, I mean execution, so it means it will not going to ask me for the value, and then my command will break and give me an error message, you know, something like invalid error because this is not a valid one, right? So this is, this is how you write a command, which is like pretty simple, run a generator, making sure you add your business logic on your execute method. If you're required to, and if you are planning to use one of the services from the Drupal container, just inject that service, I mean, while running the command generation. Let's keep moving. Okay, again, as I mentioned before, you can add commands to packages. Any, any packages don't have to be, doesn't have to be like a module or profile. And in order to do that, the only thing you need, the only, the only, I mean, thing you need to do is, is define your, your package as a Drupal console library. That's the only thing you need to do on your, on your standard PHP package to let know Drupal console. You know, this is a Drupal console library and it contains commands. So, and then, what, what we are doing, we just wrote a uh, composer plugin for doing this, so we scan, scan the, um, the libraries on, on your side and those that are Drupal console library, we scan those for, for commands and we register those commands with it on the container. Command definition is just exactly the same as commands on modules. You use the console.services YML file and you tag your commands as Drupal command. Sometimes you need to execute commands even if your Drupal site is not installed, right? Let's say a command who probably takes care of site installation with reading data from a specific place or anything you want to do. If you want to do that, you can use this tag called bootstrap uninstall. I mean, we've been discussing for months, just give it a better name. I mean, so we are open to ideas. We just give something like bootstrap, uninstall. We were not happy with the name, but we haven't like really came with a better name. So again, we're open to ideas. And again, this is required if you want to make your command available, even if Drupal is not installed. So basically, if the bootstrap is not, is not, is not happening, that command will be available. 
And how you add this to your project? Well, you create a package, and then you do composer, require, and give you a package name. And again, we use those mostly for commands that we don't want to, to end on the production server. Well, global commands. Which you can still have global commands with Drupal console. It means you can have one few a set of commands in a, within your that console file in your in your user. In order to do that, you need to go to you need to create a console that console directory in your system. You can do this by hand or by running Drupal init command and select your your user directory that, that will take care of that for you. And we create a project that is called console extend. It is a composer template that allows you to have global commands in your system. What you need to do is go to that directory and just run composer create project, use Drupal console extend, just give it the extend directory name, and this will create a new, a new project for you where you can start requiring, you know, compose the require in your standard packages that contain, com contain, con contain commands. And again, you add commands used by compose require. We, all, we already provide a Drupal console extend example project, which is here. And you are, I mean, feel free to fork this one if you want to add commands, like either globally or, or within PHP packages. As you can see here, the uh, type of the composer project, if internet allows, and it's not that slow. Wow, that's slow. Fortunately, I didn't run a composer create command. Well, once this happened, come on, open. Yeah, it's here. As you can see here, the only requirement of your package is to be is to set as type Drupal console library. And from there, what you can find out, it's we have um, the project. This project already contains two command classes, as example. Example one, it provides some, a basic command definition for you. Example two, it's pretty much the same one. Yeah, but this one is container aware. Right, and it also contains the server, the console that services definition for registering your your command. So you can just fork this one and play around with it, so you can add commands to external libraries. This is only again, this is only for external libraries. If you want to add command to a module, profile, or a library, instead of copy forking this one, just run the you know the Drupal console command, the generate command command. Let's go back to the project, to the slides. Chain commands. This is probably one of the features that I've really like, been enjoying the most working lately. A chain command, it's a feature that, are, that you can use in Drupal console. So, chain command allows you to read a uh, YAML file definition that can contain multiple commands. Let's say I can have a YAML file where I can say I want, I want to execute you know, something like generate this generate that, or you know, site install, install this module. So you can preset different commands within a YAML definition. You can pass options and argument. So we use this for do a lot of the automation that we do for our clients. The benefit of using a YAML, I mean a YAML file and a chain command is you can define placeholders. I mean you can have placeholders within the, the YAML definition and and, uh, and provide values through the command execution. You can set placeholders and do something like hyphen, hyphen, and give the placeholder name. And so those placeholders get automatically, I mean, um, register as options in your command. And you, it can also read environment variables. Let's say we use that a lot when running like commands within Docker containers. We'd set that this that .emb file that contains you know the, the, your database credentials or any API credentials. We, you can read those values within on that, on your EMB by using chains. And you can also register those as commands. So how this looks like. See, this, this is how this YAML file looks like. So we have something like this. We have this create data YAML file. This contains the first lines, the first three lines. This is where we define the command name. We have the command section of my, of my file. And here, I can give it a name. I can give it a description, and then we have the commands in the little section. This is where I can start adding commands. So I want to run the create users command, and I can pass options. I can, I can use the option limit and give in the value five. 
I can have, in this case, I can, I want to run the create vocabularies command and just use the limit file, but I also want to pass the option name words. The same, the same way you can see you are, we are using options, you can also use arguments and pass values to it. So basically you can predefine a set of commands and give, and, give the, and give them default values to run those on your system. It means if I go here, Drupal, create data, what is going to happen, this, will, this command, again, gets automatically registered on my site, will execute several commands at once. And, and the only, the only I mean, requirement that you have to do is your command should be living within, the con within your site. You have this console directory, and within that console directory, there is a chain directory. Any files on that, any YAML files on that, on that chain uh, directory will be automatically discovered by Drupal console and will be registered as a command, right? What else you can do with this? We provide some, some chains, chain YAML files, I mean recipes, if you want to read them, call like that, by, by default on the project. If you run the uh, Drupal init command and you answer yes to the option of copy chain files, what is going to happen, the files that we, pro the chain files that we, the recipes that we provide as part of the project will copy it in your, in your home directory so you can, you can play around with, with those commands. I mean, a little example that we have here, we have this site new command. I don't know if you are aware of this, but at some point we used to have a site new command that allowed you to, you know, download Drupal and, and you know, and, and for you. But then at some point, you know, the command just broken and we remove that and people ask, can we just get the command back? And we're like, oh, we wouldn't we'd really want to do that. Like, we didn't want to have a command, I mean, like write a command for that because, you know, we switched from downloading Drupal from Drupal.org to Composer and we end up like having problems with that. So what we define to, this decide to do instead, we create a chain command. And w while using chain commands, or chain commands allow you to run Drupal console command, but it also allows you to run any, any shell command. So you can run composer from here. So the site new command, what it's doing here, is just running, you know what? It's running composer create project. And the value from the, uh, from the repo, that is, as you can see here, this is a placeholder. You can define those placeholders here. You can, give, you can provide even default values for those and, provide the, and make the command ask for those commands interactively. It means if I go site, if I run this command, I can provide a specific list of values here. We also have, we also have this, this other guy that we call quick start. I don't know if you're aware of this command. This command allows you to download Drupal, allow you to, to do a composer create project and also install Drupal for you using um, uh, SQLite and finally, start Drupal from you. So basically you can just have a like fully Drupal 8 working, I mean fully Drupal 8 inside like in, in minutes. It will depend on how long Composer takes to, to run. But if I run Drupal quick start here, let me, let me run this one. First, let me get a directory because it will ask me for it. Well, quick start. Remember what I told you about the bars section? You can define placeholders, you can define the value. So if you define, a placeholder as an array, you will have those, I mean, an autocomplete here. And if you don't define as array, then it will be only like single value, as you can see on a standard. So a standard is defined as a single value, and repository is defined as an array. And the difference is, is on the execution, it asks you a question based on an array, in a list that you can choose autocomplete, or you can use as a standard. I'm not going to run this because it will probably take a little, way, way longer. Going back to the slides. And again, you can register, you can give it a name, and it will be automatically available in your system. And, well, this is the same example that I show you. And every single placeholder you do define, it's it's registered as an option on your command. So instead of passing for the interactive mode, you can provide those values directly through the ZLI execution. So you can do something hyphen hyphen directory and give it the, give it the value, or something like repository, let's, use, let's create a new site using Accio distribution, the line distribution, and just make sure you create on this directory. Okay, now let's go to the final part of the, of the presentation. How about creating commands for Drupal console? 
core? Well, Drupal console is a modular project, so we break the project in like different repositories. And we have Drupal console, we have Drupal console core, extend plugin, which is the one who takes care of register commands in, on, on, on external packages. We have console.emb, which allows you to create and register, you know, EMB, create an EMB file for you, make changes on your settings file so you can use, I mean, uh, EMB variables in your system. It also adds an external package called p dot emb, php dot emb package. So it's, it's allowed you to run, I mean, through using, I mean, emb variables. And we also provide some other packages that we use for development, which is the console YAML and console develop. So if you want to contribute to Drupal console, for a long time, this, well, it, this is always like a nightmare, you know, because you need to get the project, and then we end up hacking around. We're providing a, a way to, to change your composer file to symlink your side to, to the project. Because you can fork the, the different projects, but in order to test Drupal console, it starts getting complicated. If you want to run those projects within a site, it's a little complicated, unless you go to the vendor directory and, and fork for, for there. But that's... It was a little, little messy. So what we decided to go is we provide a command to take care of all that for you. And that's a chain command. What you need to do is just fork the repos on, I mean, on GitHub and just clone all the, all the different repos in a, using a same root directory. Let's say I'm going to use Drupal console code as a directory. And from here, I will, I will clone, I will, I will, I will clone um, different projects. And the only thing you need to do is run develop contribute command. This is a global command that we provide you in order to have this one in your system. Make sure you run Drupal in it. And you need to pass two options. First, the path where you want to I mean, create a new Drupal site, and then the directory where all of the projects are, are, are forked. What is going to happen, it will, create, it, will have, it will create this for you. It will symlink all of your vendor, you know, vendor Drupal console project to where you fork the project, you know, Drupal, con I mean, vendor Drupal, Drupal console core to the directory that you have cloned. It means you can use your IDE, go to, go to the project that you fork, make changes, and you can automatically test those changes in your Drupal site. We also provide two, I mean, two default commands for, for you can, you can you copy and paste to do your work. It's called example command, example container aware command, so you can start from there since we don't have a genera generator for, for Drupal console core commands. And you s the final, final note, I mean, Drupal console is a symphony application, so the coding style that you will find out is maybe a little different than Drupal, because Drupal uses its own coding style. The generated code is Drupal coding, I mean, it's Drupal coding style compatible, but the code within the application is a little different. So Drupal console is not a Drupal module, it's a symphony application. So make sure you, I mean, you, you can run, I mean, a PHP code sniffer to fix that for you, or use your preferred IDE like PHP Storm to make take care of the indentation and all that. And that's all that I have. So thank you. So I think we have a few minutes for questions. So if you want to ask a question, make sure to pass use to the mic and ask anything you want to. If there's no questions, I have stickers, Drupal Council stickers. If you want to just show up here and I can give you stickers. Because we all love Swag, right? Yeah. A Drupal site, and you don't want to create a new one. Let me share something. This. No. So the develop contribute command. It's only a chain command. So what it's doing here is doing like a So the the develop, the finally the develop mean um, contribute command. What it's doing is calling a composer create project, so it basically is downloading Drupal for you, 
and it's adding a new package to your site, which is console develop. So this command is the one who has the, uh, the new create develop create symlinks command. So this is not available by default. Example. It just is part of that package. So if you want to develop with Drupal console, you create a site. It, you require the Composable develop. So you can do, do all this by hand, but we automate it because we just, just tend to automate anything that we do. So we add, we add the package for you. We install Drupal. As you can see here, it's, I, mean, it's, I mean, download dependencies, console compose your install, so it's downloading Drupal and all dependencies. Then we install Drupal for you using SQLite. And then finally, we run the Drupal create symlinks using the placeholder that you are providing on the command execution, just where the code is, where the Drupal root is, and this basically gets all, do all that for you, symlink all of the directories, make a little change in the, on the project that you need to for, do the proper auto-loading, auto-loader for it. So you don't have to worry about nothing. You want to contribute, just fork those, run this command, and you're happy coding. So basically we have, we are, you, if you run all of your, like, rush helices, like Drupal, up DB, so we have a way for mapping those. Ah, okay. I didn't know that. No one knows about it. <laughs> so there's a lot of, like, like things that are not yet documented. All right. There is a command that I want to show you that is not yet documented. It's called Drush. No. No, it doesn't require trash. We have a mapping on a YAML file. All right. So if you run Drupal trash, it tells you look at this. Trash command. This is the Drupal console. Right. Actually, if, yeah. if you use the, the, the command, again, if you use AppDB, what it happens is execute the, the Drupal console. I mean, I mean, um, the exact. Thank you. 